Hi everyone, this is the third video that we're doing in this series on 1 Timothy and um, in the first two videos we looked at the importance of context, of understanding the context, particularly of false teaching in Ephesus that really is the driving force behind the letter of 1 Timothy. And then we looked in the second video on two keys uh, to help us interpret uh, 1 Timothy 2. And the first one was the importance of the word quietness, um, hesuchia in the Greek. And it's uh, really a word that isn't about volume, it's not about stopping people speaking, but it's a word about quietness of attitude. And uh, we talked about how that was the guiding principle for Paul as he brought his instructions, particularly in verse 11 and verse 12 where he frames his teaching of verse 11 and verse 12 in this principle of a quiet attitude and peaceability. Um, and then we also looked at uh, this uh, topic of whether the prohibition in uh, chapter 2 verse 12 is a universal prohibition, is meant for all time, for all people, or whether it was a temporary conditional uh, prohibition for that context. And um, we talked about how in the Greek form of the word uh, epitrepo, which is the word I'm not allowing or I do not permit, um, how the form of that makes it at least as likely if not more likely to be a temporary conditional prohibition for that context rather than a universal one and certainly that fits uh, better with how Paul related to women um, as we can see throughout the New Testament. And today what we're going to look at is focus in on the details of the words that Paul uses in his instructions in verse 11 and verse 12 and most uh, specifically we'll look at three words learning teaching and having authority. So in verse 11, Paul starts this instruction with the only command of the whole section, which is, I want a woman to learn. Women should be learning. Um, really, we misunderstand Paul if we don't understand how pro-women he is with that word. Um, we see from scholars like Philip Payne that in the list of students in Ephesus at the time, there were no female named students and so for Paul to even give this instruction to give this command which is the only command of the section that women should be learning is incredibly radical incredibly pro-women um, even Douglas Moo, who's complementarian, we've mentioned him before in the videos, he, he admits that um, the Jews didn't have a tradition of women learning. And so it would be incredibly countercultural for Paul to give this instruction. Um, but we see beyond that instruction that it's not just that women should be learning that is of importance to Paul, but how they learn that is of importance to him. The manner of their learning is really important. And in fact, it's the manner of of the actions throughout this section that is of utmost importance to Paul. So the manner of the learning, well, it starts with the framing device in quietness, this quietness of attitude that Paul wants as they learn. And he really highlights that by saying that the women should learn in full submission. Again, this word submission helps us understand the word quietness as one of attitude rather than volume, because submission isn't a word that requires silence, but it is a word that requires agreement. And so Paul is saying to the women there who, who needed educating in how to learn because they hadn't had that culture before, that to learn, to learn well, to learn properly, you have to be uh, not rebellious. You need to be in submission to your teachers. And much has been made of who the women were meant to be submitting to. Is it God? Is it men? Is it scriptures? Uh, honestly, I'm not sure that any of those will change the meaning of what Paul is getting at, because for any learning to be done in, uh, in effectiveness, it must be done in submission, both to your teachers, whether they're male or female, and to the scriptures that you're learning from. And so here we see Paul being pro-women, instructing the women to learn. And then there's a conjunction between this instruction and the next prohibition. It's, it's one thought that's being portrayed here. He says the women should learn, they should learn in quietness and submission, uh, but that they he does not allow, he's not permitting women to teach or have authority over men for they must be in quietness, the closing framing device of that instruction.
So what are the words that he's using? Well, we've talked about epitrepo, I am not allowing, being a word that's more likely to be one that is temporary, conditional than universal. And then he says, what is the prohibition? Let's put aside for a moment whether it's universal or temporary and just look at the prohibition. Well, the first word is teaching. He's not allowing women to teach. What is the word teaching? It is the generic word for teach in Greek. It's, it's not a complicated word. It's incredibly straightforward. Paul uses that word multiple times throughout the New Testament. He uses it of his own teaching, whether written or spoken, he refers to this in the same word. He uses that word when he encourages others to teach. He uses that word in Romans where he talks about the gift of teaching. He uses the word in Colossians 3 when it, he talks about teaching one another. And so this isn't a complicated word. The word itself doesn't specify the content of the teaching so much as the generic word for teaching. We understand it in this context, given the church context to be about teaching scripture. And then that word is um, put alongside the word for authority, which is a very complicated word. So there um, he says that he's not allowing a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. This word to have authority is not the normal word for authority that Paul uses himself uh, elsewhere in scripture. It's a very unique word, it's a rare word, and it's a difficult word to decipher. This is the only time this word authentain is used in the New Testament. Uh, and it's difficult to fully understand because, because of how few times we have it as an example around that time, and because of its only occurrence in the, in the New Testament, it makes it difficult to understand its full meaning. There's been an a, incredible study by Baldwin that shows us that the root of the word is about authority. But there's much debate about whether that root word is then, uh, then has the connotation of something negative attached to it, which is why some Bible translations um, translate it not just as to exercise authority, but rather to usurp or to domineer or dominate. Uh, and that's because there is this debate whether there's negative connotations of the word. We, we don't know for sure, but we should be signaled by this being the only time that Paul uses this word. The, the only time where Paul decides he's not going to use the normal word for authority, that this is a very unique uh, moment that he's describing, a very unique scenario. And, and we can't just disregard the fact that he uses a rare word for this moment. That means something. We're not sure to what extent it means something, but it does mean something. And then there's a word in between the teaching and authority, which is the word ude. Um, and this is a, a word that we're, again, there's some debate over. Does this word link the two thoughts together so that Paul is actually not making two prohibitions of women teaching or having authority, but rather um, making the prohibition against women teaching in an authoritative manner? There's lots of work and debate on this. I personally am convinced by Andreas Kostenberger's work, which would see these as two separate prohibitions, but it's important for us to note that there is some scholarly debate around this. I'm going to leave it there, though, because I don't believe, neither does Kostenberger, that whether this is one thought or two thoughts really wins the argument either for complementarians or egalitarians. So we've got to look beyond that. What I do want to do is really focus in on what these words teaching and exercising authority would mean today for us if we believe that this is a universal prohibition. I've been in many scenarios where uh, people who really are wanting to be kind and open-handed uh, to the women in their congregations, uh, where they've um, put in boundary lines or put in caveats to this teaching in order to open up the pulpit more to women. And so we have scenarios, or I've been in scenarios, where women are um, not allowed to preach on a Sunday, but are allowed to preach in conferences on a Saturday, uh, where women are told that they can teach as long as their teaching doesn't include doctrine, uh, where women are told that they can teach as long as they are under the covering of the eldership or under the covering of their 
their husbands, perhaps, uh, where women are told they're not allowed to teach in big congregations, but they are allowed to teach in home groups. The problem with all of those boundary lines is that uh, they're not scriptural, they're arbitrary. They more reflect uh, the comfort zones that we have than what Paul is referencing here in scripture, because Paul doesn't give us any of those caveats. The word that he uses for teaching is not a word that says there is specific doctrine attached to that word. Yes, it most likely is referring to scriptural teaching given the context, but we don't really know much more about the content that he would specify. And so for us to start drawing lines about we can teach other things but not doctrine becomes very difficult to argue from this word teaching here. The reality is that this is a sentence of singulars, not plurals. Paul actually says, and we often misquote him, I often misquote him, he actually says he is not permitting a woman, one woman, to teach one man. It's not a sentence of plurals. And so we cannot comfortably say, oh, he only meant for the gathered congregation of men where a woman couldn't teach them, but she could teach some men in a home group. Well, Paul doesn't give that allowance. One woman teaching one man is what he's prohibiting. And so we've got to be very careful. If we want to apply this verse universally, we cannot, on the basis of this scripture, start drawing lines around the boundaries and the caveats that we feel comfortable with. If it's a universal instruction, it is a universal instruction prohibiting a woman teaching a man any man in any context, any form of scriptural teaching. We cannot have it both ways.